While we try to be as helpful as possible, this podcast should not be considered as professional or financial advice. It contains general information only, and you should seek out professional advice for your own personal circumstances before making any financial decisions. I'm Julia. And I'm Nick. And this is the Enthusiast Lab. Nick just flew back in from Adelaide. He was there over the weekend. He went yes. to a couple of car shows. Yeah, fuck yeah. Yeah, so obviously something that was quite fresh that we've just started is that we've now expanded into Adelaide. Uh, so we'll be also Perth in WA and Adelaide. So we're the first national company to do so. But me being me, when I see some car events, fucking I'm straight there. So they, we, there was roll racing, which was pretty killer to see because we want, I wanted to go check out the track because I mm-hmm. heard that's pretty fucking massive. And also we had the JDM Festival, which we're, which I was invited to. Um, so thank you for the invite. It was fucking sick. Like the amount of cars, the level of quality of builds that were actually out in Adelaide, Fucking not what I was expecting, but overall it was a killer fucking weekend. Um, and then flew straight back. Was it Sunday night? Flew in at fucking midnight and straight back in here. Yep, straight back in. So uh, today's topic is types of builders and how to compare them. Fucking the million dollar question of how to do this. Now, we're going to go into detail. We're going to explain everything when it comes to builders. Mm. So we're going to go what types of builders there are, what are building groups, how each of them normally specialise in certain type of clientele and things like that. We're going to go into fucking detail. And then once you've understood all the fucking builders, then we're going to go into how to actually compare the pair, you know? Yeah. So we're going apples to apples, oranges to oranges type of thing, not a one motherfucker's giving you, you know, a house completely kitted out and then the other one's entry level, basic fucking bare bones, but then you're trying to compare and say that they're the same thing. It's not the same thing. Yeah, and this goes hand in hand with last week's episode when we did um, types of consultants. 100%. So this goes hand in hand. It's quite similar. This this episode's going to be a very long one. We might fucking end up having huge. to cut it halfway through and release it as a two-parter because I've got like five pages on this, so. Look, we'll, we'll see how we go and fucking, if we can, we'll smash into one. If not, we'll split into two. The last thing we want is everyone to be fucking sp- listening to shit for fucking so long that mm. you're going to sit there and go, oh, for fuck's sakes, when's it going to end? So yeah. we'll see how we go. And at the end of the day, this is the whole thing is we want to bring all this information to you guys because it's so hard to do this into one meeting mm. when I'm meeting with clients. So this is what this is all about. So if you like it, cool. If not, then you can just skip to the next episode, whatever the fuck you want to do. Yeah. So let's start. Um, let's talk about types of builders first. So all there right. are six different types of builders. Yes, yes. And I'll list them out now and then we'll go into each one. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. So we've got your entry level builders. Yeah, so your entry level builders. (laughs) I said I'll list it out. Oh, okay. (laughs) (laughs) Fucking, we're on. All right, no, go for it. Let me list them out so then everyone knows if if they want to skip. All right. You got your entry level builders, your (laughs) middle tier builders, your premium builders, luxury builders. Yep. Small and custom. Yep. And regional. 100%. So that's your six types of builders. Yeah, this, the six types of builders, yeah. So let's jump into uh, entry-level builders. Can I start now? Yes, you can start. All right, so <laughs> the first one is the entry-level builders. So the best way of explaining what these type of builders are is they're very focused on first-home buyers mm-hmm. mainly. So they pr- they like to produce a lot of very simple plans, a lot more sm- – they're more specialised in really small blocks – very finance driven, very, when you look at the plans, the hell fucking basic, right? And mm-hmm. what I mean by that is if you have bedrooms and, you know, you've got wardrobes, instead of having fancy vinyl or mirrored styling robes, they'll just be open basic doors or yep. just completely open. Whatever they can do to really drive on price. They're very mm. price driven on something cheap. The inclusions sometimes are very basic as well, just to fucking really get you through the door because it's still, it's better to get into a home 
then no home and to be paying rent. So that's what they focus on. Yeah, and it's stuff like um, single shower and single basin in yeah. the ensuite and stuff yeah. like that, rather than everyone's kind of double shower, double basin. Yeah, in the as a, like compared to that, as a yeah. starting point. So it's those things as you're cutting them back to keep it real simple. Yeah to make sure that you can try and fit into the, into a smaller budget so that at least it puts your foot into the door of the property market. Yeah, it's much better to own a house than to rent Fuck because off. you're going to be you're paying almost the same thing. You're pissing money away in rent. Like, no, yeah, you can choose where you want to rent and shit, but you're still pissing it away. It's into someone else's pocket. It's yep. not You're not reinvesting that back into yourself. Exactly. Um, so number two is your middle tier builders. Cool. So quite a few builders are actually fall into this area because – they, what they like to do is th- they would be doing still, you know, your basic four by two homes, three by two homes, whatever, but they start putting a lot more uh, focus into the design. So now it's, you start with double basins and mm-hmm. double showers. So, you know, you've got mirrored vinyl robes instead of just basic doors. Uh, a lot of times you'll start seeing bigger house plans. So now it's going to be four by two with a theater and activity and a study all into one. So, and the level of inclusions are normally quite quite a bit higher as a starting point too. Yeah, they normally have maybe um, two or three different levels of specs. So you can yeah, still go to a yeah. second tier builder, but have a entry level spec. Correct. Um, and then you go up in specs, which yeah. is when you get stone bench tops and stuff like 100%. that. 100%. So the middle tier likes to still be able to dabble in the very entry level, but also they prefer clients with obviously a bit more budget that they want to they're more focused on homes that they will be comfortable in that they will be able to live in for the mm. next five, 10 years. Yep. So those are the type of clientele or the market that they try and uh, mm. address it to. Yeah. Um, so the next one is, oh, sorry, we also forgot to mention mm-hmm. this middle tier builder also yes. um, often allows you to make small changes to the design. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So they do like to give a couple tweaks here and there. So that's, again, you're customizing this home to yourself. I love the entry level, they say they will let you, but then they might hit you with a lot more price, you know, like variations and shit like that to try and avoid you from doing so. So whereas these guys go, cool, not a problem. You want to do a couple of tweaks? Yeah, let's go for it. So mm-hmm. they are a lot more flexible on their designs yeah. and to do changes. Yeah, exactly. Um, so the next uh, type of builder is your premium builder. Yes, yes. So let's talk about that All one. All right, cool. So your premium builders, this is where – um, you'll actually start noticing that they usually have a lot more like double story homes, mm-hmm. bigger farmhouse Single home. Single and double story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting there. Yeah. So they they tend to have some sort of double story sometimes. And in the single story division, so to speak, for mm. designs, these are much bigger homes. Uh, they're more focused on the lifestyle of the actual home itself. Um, you'll, you'll see quite a bit into it. Yes, they're similar to like a middle tier, but everything's a lot more fancier. You know, they'll have waterfall ends on your kitchen rather than just a normal kitchen. They have a lot more bigger sculleries. They they focus on the actual living in the home for a long period of time, and then that's how they orientate their designs as well. Mm-hmm. So, and at the same time, these premium builders also like to focus on, what's it called, like basic infill homes. So what we're talking about infill is in like established suburbs. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So they're a bit more complicated sites. They like to, you know, have opportunities that they don't really focus so much on outer suburbs where, you know, it's just a slap it on, she be right. Mm. This is a lot more, hey, let's take the time. Let's really do the modifications and customise this home exactly to what you want. This, that's what these builders are really focused more on, on that yeah. type of clients. So these are the type of builders that you would see in established suburbs like Morley, um, Coogee, I'm just trying to think yeah, of north and south. Like, like, fuck, like your Scarborough and she like a lot more beach style. Like, do you know what I mean? It's, when you start getting into more very well established, a lot more pricier land where they just want something where they're going to be in for the next 15, 20 years. Yep. Do you know what I mean? It's in terms of like when we're looking at suburbs, it's it's those more where you'd want to raise a family. It's more yeah. family raised homes and style like that. So that's what they do. Yeah. Um, so let's move on to the fourth type of builder, which is your luxury builder. Yep. So cool. this, this isn't a builder that we've worked with. No, no, t- to be honest, it's not. And again, nev- never say never in the future, but mm. so luxury, easiest way to explain it, fucking send it. Yep. That's the easiest way to, sa- to Balls explain to the wall. it. Balls to the wall. So these, these builders are like their base plans normally start at like five, $600,000. Right, fucking stupid amount. But this is where you come into the 
we're going high end, real high finish, real custom. Like you're normally dealing with like a draftsman or architect straight up mm -hmm. with your design of the home. A lot more about, you know, the flow of the home, um, skylights, shit like that. Things that a normal project builder or something like a middle tier or entry level would just go, that's a little bit in the too hard basket. These guys go, we're starting with this. Yeah. So that's where, and then again, that's where the cost starts coming in. You'll also notice that these uh, luxury builders will focus a lot more and you'll notice these guys a lot more in the more very expensive areas. So Del everyone, Keith, it, Del Keith, Slow. Del Keith, Cotter Slow, Mount Pleasant, mm. Apple Cross. Bougie areas. Fucking bougie. <laughs> so it, it really comes into, this is the, this is like basically the way I see it is like when you've fucking made it and you want to build a home, these yeah. are these are the guys that you go to because their focus is we're going to go fucking full ham on this shit. Yeah, your house and land package is well into the mills. Yeah, yeah. Basically, like most of those homes from what I've seen from builders and shit, they normally average about 900K plus to like over a mil, two mil, you know, fucking – those yeah. double, triple stories, big on the cross with like 20 cars underneath and a fucking three-story home and mm -hmm. shit that's like three mil, that's your luxury builder. Yep. Um, and then we move away from luxury and into small and custom builders. Okay, so your small and custom, basically they go hand in hand. So it's smaller builders. A lot of them might be family-run like family -run businesses. They've got the normally the director or someone close close within their group normally has their building license. They might dabble in like, you know, five, 10, 15, you know, homes a year, mm -hmm. depending on what they can get insurance for. They're building, but they're very, very focused more on the client experience and the client service and just doing a couple of homes, still be able to make a profit at the end of the day. Yep. But rather than doing big volume of it, it's very small, very, very personable experience. Mm -hmm. A lot of the times that we have seen, and they actually dabble a little bit in areas wise in the estates as well as in the more infill, dif infill difficult areas because they're happy to take it on because they're not doing 30, 50, 100, you know, thousand homes mm. a year. They're only doing a couple. So they can take a little bit longer, but they'll still, they can still pick up their speed. Yep. And the big thing for them is always efficiency on site, mm -hmm. making sure they're not fucking piss taking three years in building because they're not going to get paid. Exactly. And they kind of fall between uh, your middle and your premium builder. It just depends what kind of inclusions you yes. choose, what kind of specs you choose. But yeah, they fall kind of in between these two. Yeah, hundred percent. And they and sometimes depending on what they're willing to accept, they might dabble in some double story product mm -hmm. as well as single story. So they're not always just like hell basic or real high end. They can be in between. They might take a couple smaller, cheaper homes, more simpler jobs, and then take on quite a few big, complicated yeah. jobs to be able to even out their, their workflow yeah. as well. Um, and moving on to the last type of builder, which is your regional builders. Yes, your regional. So when you're looking at a regional builder, you're looking at the real outer suburbs, like basically almost like country, so to speak. Mm. So in Perth, for example, when you start looking at like going out to Geraldton, Bunbury, Margaret River, real outer suburbs, in terms of in Adelaide, Fuck, like when you when you start looking at where the average areas are and then you start adding 100 kilometres away, top of, I'd top say of scenario. above two wells. No, um, no, some builders can go past that, but definitely you're starting to get on that teetering edge after okay, two so wells because it's really getting out there. If I was to throw Wyala. locations for Perth and Adelaide, so yep. for Perth I would say Chittering North and up uh, in the hills, so like our Rolly Stone and further east. Yes, um, and Falcon continuing south, that is where your regional builders kind of really shine. Everything between Correct. that triangular, metro builders, some do, some don't go yes. like that far, but that's kind of like your triangle. Yeah, that's that's basically the limit because it's like, I actually get this quite a bit with clients where they go, it's only 10 minutes further out. It's only 10 minutes further out. Yes, but where do you draw that line on mm -hmm. how far 10 minutes is? So builders go, this is gone where it's going to go. And then, you know, a lot of the regional builders go, hey, this is where we come to shine. We can help you there. Yep. We can do this. And you'll normally see that's where a lot more cheaper blocks, bigger blocks, um, they might have a lot more complicated sites. So like rocks and clay and boulders and shit like that. And they do this shit day in, day out. So that's what they like to do. Um, and if we were to put it for Adelaide, I'm just, I'm putting regional dot points because some builders do, some people don't. Yep. Um, but two wells, if you're going north. Yeah. Um, Mount Barker, if you're going east. 
Yeah, for not, pa- not past Mount Barker, yep. Yeah. Um, and, oh, goodness, I forgot the name. Is it C? Past Seaford. Seaford. Seaford, Seaford Heights. Um, yeah. Yeah, th- so th- those are normally like those sw- the sweet spots yep. of a lot of builders. And then you start getting into that more regional, like Stratford Bine and shit like that. So mm. it really comes out, for example, like your Stratford Bine, uh, Mount Compass, stuff like that. You're not – a lot of the builders start going – it's a little bit too much. So it's just that – a little bit further out, where the, that's where the regions go. Yeah, where cool. your metro builders don't go. Yes. Um, and they specialise in um, a different type of style of construction because you're going regional. It requires different type of, types of engineering and... Yeah, yeah, definitely. And even like block size as well. So mm. they they tend to have a huge range of, you know, like your farmhouse style homes because a lot of us are, you know, wider blocks, acreages, etc., like that. That's where they really come to shine. Yep. Um, rather than it being just a... You know, just your basic three by twos or four by yep. twos. Which most people are happy with. Oh, 100%. Um, so to summarise, uh, we have six types of builders. Yes. Entry, middle, premium, luxury, small mm-hmm. and custom, and regional. Now, we, we're not going to name any companies that fall into there. Guys, no. you do your own research. Yep. You'll you'll find out pretty quickly who they are. You'll be able to notice. Yeah, yeah. You, you'll... If you you can take on even little bits and bobs from these bills that we've explained how they normally attract clientele, you'll start picking up going, oh fuck, okay, this is what they do, this is what these guys do, etc. Yeah. So um, something else we want to mention is a lot of these building companies mm-hmm. they fall into building groups. Yes. So building groups usually have. Um, uh, like a parent company. A parent company, but they also ha- normally have like a couple of these types of builders in their group. So yes. they group together. Um, yeah, yeah. So let's name a few building groups. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, so I've got BGC. Yeah. Well Biz- known one. Yeah. BGC WA. Residential. Yeah. Uh, Summit Group. Yep. Uh, ABN Group. Yes. SSB Group. Yep. Scott Park. Yes. And Spatacini. Yes. Yeah. Pretty much. So those are your main building groups in Western Australia. We're Correct. not. Um, well versed in Adelaide yet, so nah. we're not going to name any because we don't want to get anything incorrect. Yeah, yeah, um, that's fine. And an example of having multiple building companies in a group, um, I will use Scott Park Group as a example. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so in Scott Park, you've got B1 Homes. Yes. Red Ink Homes. Yes. And 101 Residential. Yep, spot on. So those three companies are their own companies. Yeah, yeah. But they fall into... The one group, and they normally have a parent company, which is yeah. So, so, so the parent parent company, or like the overall, is the group Scott Park Group. But then each of these builders do their own thing. So mm-hmm. B One Homes is a lot more focused on first home buyers mm-hmm. um, and some second home buyers. Your Red Inc. again, they dabble in first home. They do a lot more of the regional sections. They can do a lot more of the middle the, tier. Yeah, the middle tier premium scenario, mm-hmm. and then your one on one residential again. Double a little bit, but then they do a bit more of that luxury, a bit more high-end premium homes. Premium, not luxury. No, no, oh. sorry. No, no, no. Premium. <laughs> Fuck. Premium. Take so that they, back. Yeah, so they're Take that double between quick, quick. middle and premium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they're more middle and premium. Yeah, so the whole group has normally one or two from each type of builder. Yeah, Your Entry, 100%. middle, premium. Yeah, yeah. Normally, most when you see these groups, that's how they normally like to structure them is they can double with each other, but normally it's... One of this, one of this, one of that. Happy days. Yeah. Perfect. Um, and let's talk about what to consider when choosing a builder. So I've got three dot points here and the first yeah, one is budget. Yes, 100%. So it all comes down to budget. Finance, finance, finance. So at the end of the day, there's no point looking at one of the premium builders if your budget is only, for example, let's say 250000 for a home. If their styling prices on most of their designs are three fifty, four hundred k, you're you're not going to be able to scrape it back enough to be able to start there. Mm. You might want to focus on a more budget driven or a mid middle tier where they might have a few opportunities for you and to focus on it there. Because at the end of the day, if you spend too much on your land, you want to be, you want to be dialed back for how much budget you have for a home and what style of, builder you're going to be able to afford. And vice versa. If you spend exactly. too much on a house design, you're not going to have enough for land. No, fuck no. You're going to get, you're going to get yeeted out to out of the suburbs to try and compensate for the same budget because it's all about finance. Yep. 
Uh, and the second one is um, land. So you got to decide what kind of builder you want to go with depending on where you want to build. Yeah. So your land is super yeah. important. Yeah, land, location, size. Uh, these are the things that really do come into play. So again, if you're going out into the more regional areas and a lot of these builders only focus on the metro, they're not going to be able to help assist and vice versa. So if you start looking at builders that they might specialise a lot more in, you know, in other suburbs like the estates, the up and up and developing because they're a lot easier for sites, you might have opportunity for many more builders to look at. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you've got a, if you're doing like a demo rebuild, we're getting that quite a bit at the moment in more established areas, some of the builders won't actually touch them because it's a bit too complicated or they might not be able to get their trades you know, secure then have them come to because at the moment with what we're dealing with, the boys only want to travel five, 10 minutes away. And mm -hmm. if they live in their estates, they don't want to be eating for fucking half an hour into the, in the suburbs. Yeah. That's what we have to deal with. That's it. Because most of the tradies have already built a home. So they 100%. are happy to work in the estates rather than traveling in, yeah, into yeah. the city. They'd rather go out of the city. Yeah, exactly. Like, again, we can't speak for all the trades, but this is the common, the commonality that we're seeing in the current market at the moment. When things slow down, it's always open, you know, the discussions can be had. But at the moment when there's such a demand, the trades are the ones that are setting the pace for what they can or can't do. And that also comes back to the builders. Yeah. And the last point I wanted to cover yep. was design. So yes. you'll fall into a type of builder based on the design that you're looking for. Yes, Single absolutely. Single story, double story, big farmhouse, skinny house, it all that all plays a factor as 100%. well. 100%. And this is the thing is if you go to a builder, you go, yeah, I've got the budget and I've got the block, but then all of a sudden those plans, that these designs from that builder is all high-end double stories or high-end big homes and they're not going to actually work with everything else. Or you might, Do you know what I mean? You, all three parts must come together, otherwise you're up shit creek. It's going to go wrong some way. So the design, you want to have, you want to be a, focusing on the, on the design based on the builders that what they're able to offer. Mm. If you have to sit there and do thousand fucking changes to one plan just to make it look somewhat that what what you're wanting, mm -hmm. it might not be the right builder because yeah. it's not actually, you're adding so much in variations and costs, whereas something that has already started there, they might have a few more opportunities for you. So these are the things that you do need to consider with the whole scenario. It's you've got your budget, you've got your land, but also design. If the design's not right, then you're fucked. Then go to a different builder. 100%. 100%. It's, it's not the end of the world because, again, like we said, some of these builders have a group, so they might have someone else. That, so you're still getting from that same group and company, et cetera, mm -hmm. but it might be with a builder that's more focused on what your situation is because mm -hmm. no, two, no two situations are the same. And, guys, you are building the home, so don't settle for, for less. For less because no, fuck it, no. Your, it's your money. It's... You're it's, paying for it. You're going to be living in this, not the builder. So no. if it doesn't work, just move. Yeah. And it's, that's totally okay. It is okay. I know it can get frustrating for a lot of people, but at the end of the day, you're the one paying for this. They can either come to the party and work and understand and do something or get fucked mm. because they're not paying for it. You are. so, And you're going to be paying this for the next 10, 20, 30 years. It's a long time. The process of building and owning your own home is daunting as it is. It's scary. It's a lot of fucking money. Mm -hmm. So the last thing you need is the build to sit there and set the rate going, you can only do this, you can do that, and that's it. Fuck you, man. I'll do what the fuck I want as long as it's achievable. Yeah. So um, based on these three things to consider, yep. uh, the budget, the land, and the design, yes. you would normally fall into one or two of types of builders, whether you're looking at the... Uh, middle and premium, and you kind of can fall in between those two. You can dabble in the middle and up, do a couple of upgrades or go into premium, do a, you know, maybe not downgrades, but go for a simpler a, a simpler, A simpler design or so, something a little bit smaller, but has a bit more of those high-end finishes that you wanted mm. and doing it that way. Yeah, 100%. You normally fall within one or two op, like builder options by, yep. by doing this, like, fuck, what's the word called? When you dial it down. like Downscale? No, nah, no. Nah. Oh, fuck, this is going to do my head in. I feel like I could just scale it down. <laughs> yeah, fine. All right. That's scale, the word we're going. Scale it down, guys. <laughs> scale it down. Um, and once you've kind of narrowed oh, down. Oh, that's process of elimination. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Fuck, we got there. Ryan's laughing in the background. <laughs> <laughs> it got to me, guys. It got to me. Ryan's our um, media, so you can see our three cameras. He's, he's the our, motherfucking director. He's our media. Big shout out to you, man. Yep. Big awesome. Um, so the last thing that we are um, 
thinking about. So mm-hmm. you've looked at your budget, your land, yep. your design, you know that you're falling into a couple of builders, you've done your research, you yes. like two different builders or three different builders. The next thing that you would need to start comparing is inclusions and specifications on each builder and see how they stack up. Yeah. So I yeah. will time check us and see how we're going. One moment. Running at 25 minutes. 25 minutes. You know what? Let's continue. I reckon we can 25 smash minutes. Out. Yeah. Fucking, fucking send this. We're sending it. Guys, this will be a long episode. So yep. strap on in or grab, listen to this after. Grab your fucking popcorn, <laughs> get your drink, get your iced coffee. Settle down. And we're on. So um, let's talk about how to compare builders based on the inclusions and specs. So you know the builder that you've fallen into? Yes. So how to compare them? Let's talk about specs. Okay, cool. So what the fuck is a building specification? So builders use this basically as like as a guide um, so that for choosing the right material for the level of home that you want to build and obviously to suit your budget, right? So the level of inclusions that you can get uh, can sometimes be grouped into different specs. So sometimes what you hear is like an entry level spec, a turnkey spec, a more, and then like a premium spec, for example. Mm-hmm. Normally most builders have like three levels and the entry level is usually like the bare bones shell of a home mm-hmm. where some people might just want to do their own shit. Mm-hmm. Cool. The next one is the, you know, the turnkey, so to speak, it's usually the minimum requirements that are needed by the bank because certain banks have requirements for what's allowed, you know, what's the bare minimum like? You must have flooring, you must have blinds and you must have like air con or mm-hmm. painting in mm-hmm. there. So they'll do that as like the second type. Mm-hmm. And then the third one is when they start throwing all the shit in there. Yeah. Your raised ceilings, your fucking stone bench tops, LED down lights, you know, fancier blinds. All the things. All the things. Yeah. All the things. So I don't want to get into specs a huge amount, but you've summarized that quite well because I do want to do a separate episode on specs because yeah, yeah. that's super important. Oh, f- fucking, that is the the whole core of the whole home. Mm-hmm. You can have the best fucking plan, but if you've got, if you're walking in and you have to spend another 30, 50 K on the home to actually finish it, fuck me, man. Like, look, some people might like it, but for me, I'm too fucking lazy. I yeah. just want my shit. I just want the shit done. We're simple people. So Hello basic. Um, the things to look at um, to see what's already included. So this is how you start comparing them. Yep. It's seeing what's already included and what type of thing is included when we start listing these out. So like, yeah. um, is air con included and what type of an air con is it? Is it ducted? Is it split or evap? Yeah, hundred um, percent. Is painting included? Yes. Um, yeah. So painting, when we're talking about painting, you gotta be careful because some, some uh, consultants can trick you with this. Mm-hmm. Your doors and frames and ceilings must be painted by law, by, yes. by the building code. Well, when we're talking about painting, we're talking about the internal walls of the home. Mm-hmm. Just, just so then people actually understand. Like when we're talking, paint's included, and you ask a, a builder if they're a smiler, I'm like, yeah, it is. But then you walk in and your fucking house is empty. Mm-hmm. You have to paint it yourself. Yeah, so that's the two different parts of painting. Yes. Um, flooring? Yep. Yeah, so flooring, this is where it comes into, you've got different styles. You want to compare the same. Some of them do like lino, like the hell, hell basic povo spec. Then you've got vinyl, vinyl floorboards. Mm-hmm. Um, and that can be vinyl, like timber plank, or it can be those hybrid floors. Mm-hmm. And then you've got tiling. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is for like your main living areas, your car, you know, and bedrooms. So mm-hmm. this is where we're talking about where there is carpets, where there isn't carpets. And in tiles, what size are they? Are they 300 by 300? Are they 450 by 450? Or are they 600 by 600? Because each of those have different costs associated because obviously it's a bit more ex- expensive, the tiles, and for the laying of it as well. Because mm, it's more complex to Fuck lay a bigger no. tile than a smaller tile. Yep, there's more exactly chances it. of it cracking or damaging. And there's wastages on site, so that you have to order more, etc. Mm-hmm. So all this shit needs to come into play. Yeah, exactly. Um, blinds and what kind of blinds are yeah, included? Yeah, dead set. So quite often you'll see the main three you normally see is uh, your roller blinds, Venetian blinds, and vertical blinds. Mm-hmm. So vertical blinds, most of us have seen these before in homes that we've been raised in. So the hell old, like 1980s style, they used to have the little chain on them and the fucking, those yeah, ones. The, the straight ones. Yeah, the straight ones. Now they've they've removed the fucking chain and now they've got like a little self weight. So it's mm-hmm. the hell basic ones, right? Then you've got Venetian, which are normally like those like aluminium ones where 
if you fucking grab them too hard, they start bending and shit. So if you've got cats and shit, you probably don't want those. Mm-hmm. And then your third one, which is your roller blinds, like more like a like a blackout blind type of scenario. Mm-hmm. They're quite good because they obviously close a lot more of the lighting, especially yeah. around theaters and shit. Um, and then you can go for more upgraded oh, yeah. blinds, but that's when you start going into premium and bougie. Yeah, stuff. yeah, and like so and yeah. that's your that's your main three that Th- you start. Those are your main out. three. Yeah. Um, let's name like two more. So, uh, bench tops. What cool. kind of bench tops are included? Okay, perfect one. Laminate bench tops and stone bench tops. Huge mm. fucking price difference between the two and how the whole home sets up. You're talking thousands of dollars in a home. If one person has just laminate and the other one has stone, so you need to be able to compare the pair exactly the same. And it's also good to note where is the stone included because it's yes. not always included throughout the home. It might just no. be stone to the kitchen. Yes, correct. And that's what people see and they're like, oh, so everywhere else must be stone. No, no. not necessarily. No. You've got to read those specs. You've got to see what they're offering. A lot of the times they'll start with stone in the kitchen first and scullery if it's applicable. And then after that, it becomes a, oh yeah, it's stone bench tops throughout. So make sure you read the throughout and look at what's listed. Is it bathroom, ensuite and laundry, or is it just bathroom? Mm-hmm. And th- that's where uh, you got the same kind of design, same yes. kind of specs. And that's the difference between a couple of thousand dollars. Yeah. And when you start adding all these things up, it, it can rack up to what, $10,000, $15,000 difference very so quickly. So quick, man, so quick. And it's- it all looks the exact same thing yeah. on the plan, looks the exact same thing on the quote but it's because you haven't read through the little fine details of what is actually included. And that's, yeah. Yeah. Well, and this is the thing, right? Is a lot of builders can, can spruce up with like different packages saying you get this, this, and this, you just, you want to dial it all in and make sure that you're looking at everything the exact same. So if it's aircon, is it ducted in reverse cycle? And is the other person the same? Cause if they are evaporative versus ducted, fuck, there's a couple grand. Mm-hmm. If they've got split system, you know, the help basic ones mm-hmm. and you've gone ducted, fuck, there's even more of a difference mm-hmm. than painting from one home to the other. That's a big one. Bench tops. Is it stone? Is it laminate? What is it? Um, flooring. Yeah, your f- oh, fuck. Flooring's a big one. Mm-hmm. Make sure you've got the same comparisons. And um, let's do ceiling and height. Ceiling height. Yeah. 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 That's okay. A big that's one a good as well. one. And I think a lot of people don't recognize how big of a difference that would make. Yeah, definitely. So your standard ceiling heights normally across the board is 28 courses. So this is talking brick courses. So about 2.4 meters high from mm-hmm. floor to ceiling. Now, normally a lot of builders like to offer raised ceilings into the living areas. Um, that goes up to 31 courses. So about 2.75 roughly. Um, but in ceiling heights as well, you got to look at the garage because a lot of, you know, with what we do, mm-hmm. we raise the garages. So, you know, there's a lot more costs in that evolved versus a build that goes, yeah, we're the same, but then you haven't put the thousands of dollars into raising the garage. Mm-hmm. So everything you want to make sure that you're getting exactly the same because to do a normal home, look, this is very rough. Don't fucking quote me on this shit because it's different. Mm-hmm. But for a normal home to have 31 in the living areas and a little bit high in the garage, that can be 19 grand. Mm. So you have yours that's already raised versus some other guy because they're going, oh, you're fucking 20, 30 grand more expensive. Yeah, yeah, but, but hold why? on, hold the fuck on. And Once you bring it all in, then you can see where the value is. And uh, some builders do raised ceilings throughout. Yes. Um, and some builders do just the raised ceiling, ceilings to the main living areas. And Correct. that's a big difference because yeah, yeah, if yeah. you're raising ceilings throughout the home, that's a, it that's costs, a big difference. It costs a shitload more. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It. So again, you want to go, when you're looking at raised ceilings, because again, somewhat, two builders might go, you have raised ceilings. Okay, fuck, where? Mm-hmm. What is it? If they're not giving you that information, run. If mm-hmm. they do, get it broken down so you know exactly what the fuck you're getting and where. So then you can really compare the pair because no, and then you'll start noticing that no two bills are the same because they've always got their little little tweaks and how they do things. Yeah, the little quirks. Yeah, hundred um, percent. So uh, the next thing that you should be looking when you compare builders is yes. site works, and this one is a little bit difficult because. The specs and what's kind of included is normally on a website or you kind of get that information on your first appointment. Yes. Whereas site works, most builders and most consultants, they don't want to give out that information readily available. No, because it can fluctuate a lot. So depending on where you're building, what your site is, that can change a lot. Are you in an estate where it's more sandy site? Is it in an estate where it's got more clay? Are you more infill where you might need to do demolition and clearing and then Mm -hmm. do your site works? And again, in that area, what is it? Is it real difficult? You know, do you have main sewers? There's so much that really comes into play. But builders also 
also fluctuates their costs on this because there are two main ways that builders normally do it, depending on the situation. One is provisional sum mm-hmm. and the other is fixed. Mm-hmm. What you'll normally see with, let's just go, let's just do it. Let's just do fixed first. Okay. Okay. So because provisional can go into a few different ways. With fixed site works, it's normally, you'll notice this in, across the board with builders, is that it's going to be focused on estates, like estate jobs. So what I mean by that is if you're building in a new developing estate, the developers already started spending a lot of money into working out the earthworks in that area. So they, they're comfortable to be able to give you a fixed price to build in that area for that size home on that block. So for example, you might get a fixed price of 17, 18 grand and that's it. Or plus if you're doing bushfire ratings and other things, it will be an X amount fixed. Mm -hmm. Whereas some builders will go, we're not doing that. We're going to give you provisional. And what provisional means is exactly that subject to all the results coming back from the site. So once you've done a survey and engineering reports and all the assessments. And that's all done after you've signed up. Yes, 100%. Mm-hmm. So what they're going to do up front, and this is where you you need to make sure you're comparing the same. They might throw 15 grand, but the other fuckers put fixed at 19. Mm-hmm. So there's four grand difference straight away. So you want to make sure that if you're going to compare them, you compare them at the same point with the same value. And question, why is one person getting a lot higher and one's a lot lower? and start figuring it out from there because the provisional can go up or it can go down. Very minimal, it goes down depending on how the consultant works and how much how knowledgeable they actually are mm. in building in those areas versus someone that just goes, hey, it might be a little bit more, but it's fixed, you know where the fuck you're at and yep. that's it. If it's more, the builder will cop the cost. Yep. This is all that you gotta pay. That, exactly. That, that's the price, full stop. Yeah, that's Close pretty much it. The book. Some people like that. It's it's safer. They mm. know, okay, cool. Worst case, this is what it is. It's fixed. Then fucking should be right. Some people go, I'm really fine on detail. I want to try and save every single penny. Okay, cool. But be aware, it's a double-edged sword. Yep. Um, and the last part I want to talk about is research. So um, similar to how you research your building brokers and your, well, not your consultant, but your building brokers, yep. do the same for builders. 100%. Um, because... Uh, other things to like think about is build time. Yeah, fuck. Fuck, that is, this is probably the biggest thing at the moment, right? We're in, it's 2023 right now, but this has been going on for the last two, three years and it will potentially continue on for at least another year or so until everyone really sorts the shit out. Timeframes is a big one. And what we're talking about is how long it's actually taking in two points. One is from start when you first pay your deposit all the way through to the end and you are picking up the keys. And the other version is also the time frame of construction alone. And what we're saying is you've dealt with all the shit that's, you know, that you need to do. Now you're talking about from the moment, you know, the soil is being turned on your block and you're in construction. How long is that taking? Cause that's where the bills are really fucking up at the moment. Yep. That's where like some of them are taking two, three years. Other That's people what's are all taking over Shonky right now. Hundred percent on your Shonky builders and build and clients' processes. You got to take all of this into consideration when you're looking at because everyone can promise you a twelve month build. Where does that twelve month begin? What mm-hmm. does it entail? What have they? How are they able to enforce that? What's their average build times? Mm-hmm. And uh, and this is something for a lot of people to think about with the timeframes in the loan. And we'll go into more shit mm-hmm. with build timeframes. Look at, let's say that there's there are builders at the moment offering nine months, right? Mm-hmm. It's fucking stupid, wild. We offer 12 months. We offer a 12 month from, and it's, I, I tell clients, it's from slab being poured yep. to picking up keys, yep. right? Because our builder is more than happy to put us through all the contracts mm-hmm. and their average is eight to nine months. Yep. So they are more than happy to guarantee 12 months because they're not going to go over it. For the past three years in this in through all the shit we're dealing with, they've never gone over 12 months with both of our builders we work with. Yep. So therefore, they are comfortable to be able to give those guarantees. They know that they can deliver on that. Whereas a lot of these builders, they'll give you this, oh yeah, they're giving you 12 months, but there is like three pages of clauses and sub clauses and all this shit going subject to weather, subject to materials, subject to trades. What ends up happening with those, all those subjects, you might as well wipe your fucking ass with it because it means nothing. Yep. It's it's a fucking gimmick to try and reinforce and to build some confidence into the client and then they'll fuck you up in the in the long run. That's how I see it. Yeah, and you've kind of um, lead, well, you've kind of covered the next three points or my two points, which is the build time and make sure you're reading the guarantees and the clauses because yes. 
those two go hand in hand. Like read all the clauses, read all the guarantees. Um, and, and just, sorry. Yep. My bad. But <laughs> if you if you do get a copy of it and you're concerned, you can't understand something, raise it with the builder, mm-hmm. raise it with the consultant. And if they're not, give, if it's still a little bit far-fetched, man, send it to us. We'll fucking read it out for you. We'll fucking lay it all out for you and then you can make a decision on mm-hmm. what it is. We're always here to try and help. And, th- and that is something that you really do need to take into consideration is if you don't understand something, don't fucking sign. This is the biggest purchase of your life. 100%. Like, fuck me. Like, I know we get excited and I know a lot of people like to buy an emotion and it, it's a huge stepping journey. But you need to take two, two seconds to remember where you are, what you're about to do, and that you need to make sure that everything is fucking nulled out to a T, that you know what the fuck you're going yourself into. If you don't, ask. It's It's okay. It's okay mm-hmm. to ask a question. There's nothing wrong with that. You need to understand that you haven't done this before, or maybe you have. We do this. I've been doing this for the last seven years and built fucking well over 200 plus homes. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, is I'm still learning shit all the time. What fucking cer- certain words mean, certain phrases, how processes are taken into place. And you might have never done this, so it's okay. You're not, it's not stupid. It's not wrong. Just ask the questions. Ask the questions. So um, I had to add that in. No, that's good. Uh, and the last thing I wanted to add is reviews. Check oh, builders' yes. reviews because they're super important. That's coming from customers. Yes. And check reviews on things like Google, Shonky Builders, yes. Product Review, yes. Facebook, Instagram. There are reviews on all of these websites. 100%. And, and like we had mentioned before about the build pages, mm-hmm. those Instagram pages, that's a very good one as well. Oh, yeah. I forgot to add that in. Yeah. So basically the Instagram pages are very good because it shows the lights from the client's perspective from when they first spoke to all the way through. Um, it's usually very unbiased compared to like product reviews where a lot of the times builders incentivize clients to mm-hmm. try and give them a review. Whereas this is the raw from start to end and you can see the dates, you can see it all being posted and shit. And this is where you can start going, a builder can promise you 12 months, right? Or fucking, we're going to do this in 15 months from mm-hmm. start to end. But then you look at these clients and they're all taking two, two years, years, three years. And you're going, well, how are you guaranteeing this? But then your actual clients that have, are spending the money with you are, mm. n- are not getting that. And this is where you come into play with all of this research is, yes, go into the Facebook pages where it's like shonky builders and stuff like that, but don't use it to, to your heart because a lot, a lot of the things out there are very negative. So take them, absorb what you can, but don't use it as your final decision. Then look at, like I was saying, what the actual builders are doing, what other clients are doing, and talk to the consultants, see what they're like. See if you bring up some of the shit and actually approach them with it, how do they react? Mm-hmm. If they instantly go on the defense, you know something's going wrong. Yeah. Whereas if they go, yeah, there have been a few fuck ups, but this is the reasons why, and they mm-hmm. can give some explanations, then you then you know you're actually dealing with something that's a bit more transparent and you can probably work with, you can work with that. Yeah. Whereas, you know, when they're going, no, 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 that's not what it is, they're fucking full of shit, blah, blah, blah. Fuck well, you, man. Yeah. Bye. Um, okay, Bye, to, Felicia. to summarize um, how to compare the builders, Yes. check the specs and make sure that the specs are the same. And yes. if they're not the same, then you know why there would be a price difference. Yep. Um, check the site works or ask about site works and see if they are provisional or fixed because that would be a di- make a big difference. Yes. Um, and check the builders' timeframes, check their reviews, check the guarantees, check their... Um, clauses, those are the things as well that you need to look at before, you know, choosing a builder and finalizing your purchase with them. Yeah. Um, well, another one also is like when you're looking at is I like to show clients it's like a triangle, mm-hmm. right? It's a very important thing that I like to go through everyone in there in when we catch up with them. And the reason why is because when you're looking at things, when you buy something or whatever, everyone wants everything. But the reality is you can normally get two out of the three things, right? And the way I explain it with building is what is the most important things for you? Is it quality of build? Is it the size and inclusions of the home? Or is it the price? Mm-hmm. And you really, you really got to start looking, uh, think about this, because you go, all right, I want the best quality and the best price. Okay, well, you're going to lose on inclusions and size of the home. Okay, I want best quality and inclusions. Well, you're going to pay for the price. I want best price and inclusions. Well, you're going to get a pretty shitty quality or a very long time frame in mm-hmm. your build. And these are the things you need to take into consideration. No builder is offering all three. No. Best 
is two, sometimes one. Mm -hmm. So these are the things that, you know, I really like to take into account because you need to be able to see what is the values of what you're actually getting versus something that's just promising the world and then shit goes wrong. Yeah. This is, like we've said before, this is the biggest purchase of your life. Don't rush into it. Make sure you do your research. It's just, it's just more about obviously how to compare builds. It's like all these builders can build the same house, right? So can, you can go to five different fucking shops and they can all do the same thing. So when I'm, so again, there's for the car people out there. So there are many, you have a specialized car, you're into your race cars and there are a lot of shops out there that, you know, would specialize in your specific type of vehicle or that type of race cars. It's not like you're going to grab a car that's worth a hundred K that you've dumped into this and then take it to like an ultra tune or to a fucking so generic. Basically you buy a Merc, you go Masters. to Merc. Yeah, fuck oath. You're not going to, again, you can, but it's, what I'm saying is when you start spending and you really focus on what the, the car is and everything, you want to go to someone that knows their shit about this to a fucking T and you will might have to pay a bit more because you're paying for that specialized service. And that's what you're looking for. You're not going to go and chase the cheapest price, but expect them to have the same level of knowledge and experience in something so particular. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm trying to get at is like, you get those specialist performance cars and then you get a normal, you know, a generic fucking dealer that does the services. You know that there's going to be a few differences between the two and you want to make sure what you're comparing the pricing and everything to be exactly the same for what your application is. Yep. Whether it's car or home. Yep. That's how I like to try and explain it. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, so plug, you can find us, which is Mr. Enthusiast on Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube, if you're not watching this on Google. YouTube, Google, uh, you our can website. find us on our website, yep. um, and on Apple and Spotify podcast, if yes. you are watching this on YouTube. Um, and we're not here. Us, we're not here to fuck spiders. Bye.